Today's video is part one of learning how to change notes with Lifting Grace Notes. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, sharing with any other pipers in your life, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. And remember to hit that bell icon to get notifications. I post videos every week. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. In previous episodes in this series, I discussed how we used grace notes, lifting and tapping motions to separate notes of the same pitch. Given the nature of the pipes, we can't stop the airflow going to the reed to separate notes. You can on a practice channer, but you can't readily do that on the pipes because the air is constantly flowing. Well, that is separating notes, but what about giving notes emphasis? What about trying to create the illusion, if you will, of dynamics or making one note seem more important than another note. If every note is of equal importance, music sounds kind of stale and stagnant. We want certain notes to kind of pop. And one of the primary ways we do that on the Highland Pipes is by the use of lifting grace notes while changing notes. But that can be a rather complicated thing. There's a lot of fingers involved. So I've broken this down into two parts. It's going to follow a very similar structure to the new approach to the Highland scale that I did at the beginning of this series. So the first notes are going to involve notes that don't involve crosses. And when I say a cross, that's when, when you go to change a note, you're having to both lift fingers and lower fingers to make the change. For today, we're going to deal with just the notes where everything is either lifting or lowering together in one motion for the note change, just to keep things simple. In the next episode, we'll talk about how to go ahead and use crosses and lifting grace notes to change notes, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. In the description below, there are links to PDF downloads of all the material we're going to be going over today, so please print that out, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. For today's material, I really feel you need either a color printer or to keep it on a tablet or a computer because color is going to be a very important part of today's exercise. If you don't have access to a larger screen, however, you can go ahead and print out the material and just get some highlighters. And I have a neon highlighter and a blue highlighter. And you can just go through and highlight the material as shown here. That's going to match what you see on the screen, but be very careful. But this is not my first suggestion because if you mess up with your highlighting, it might mess your learning up. So try to get this printed out through a color printer or go ahead and just keep it on a tablet like I'm going to do today. It'll make the learning process a lot faster. The notation I use for the fingering chart here is the same as my early lessons from the basic series where we discussed how to put our hands on the channel and what the basic notes were. So if this is new to you, go back to the previous videos, take a look at those sheets. I had a version of this that had all of the information on it, letter names and fingers and everything else. And I'm not going to lie, it ended up being so much information on here, it made everything less clear to read. So if this doesn't quite make sense to you, go back to some of the earlier videos and there'll be a card up here uh, to the specific video I'm talking about and go back and review that material so that you can familiarize yourself with the fingering system and the chart that I'm using here. So when we're changing notes with grace notes, it's all about lifting all the fingers that need to be lifted in one motion and then lowering all the fingers that need to be lowered to get to where you're going. So if we look at the first example today, we're starting actually with a G grace note on low G. So you can see on the example that for the grace note itself, you see the fingering chart for a low G, but the G grace note is up and it's highlighted in yellow. That's meaning right now it's going to be up. If you look at the very next fingering chart next to it, you can see that there's a blue closed hole. So what that's telling us is that we're going to lower that finger to get that initial G grace note to low G. So that's not changing notes, that's just even getting started. What about the very next change right here where we're going to be using a G grace note to take us to a low A? In this case, you can see on the chart that we have both the bottom pinky and the top pointer finger both highlighted in yellow with an open hole telling us that that's going to be a lifting motion. So we're gonna lift the pinky because we're going to an A from a low G and we're gonna lift the pointer finger because we're using the G grace note to get there. So both of these should come up together at the same time if the pinky comes up early, you're going to hear a low A, and we don't want that. I call that a chicken noise. Bagah! That doesn't sound too good. 
but we also don't want to just lift this finger and then switch our fingers when we're trying to get to it when we're finished. That can lead to some messy fingering and a less clear grace note. So we want to try to make this as mechanically simple as we can. And doing that means lifting everything that needs to be lifted at the same time and then lowering everything. In the first step of the second note here, you can see again from low G, lifting the pointer and the pinky. And then you can see with the blue, we're lowering just that top finger so we can get to that A. And again, I'm starting from the very beginning of the exercise, doing the G grace note to low G, and then the G grace note to the A. I'm going to go ahead and get a metronome going. Today I'm going to be using the Soundbrenner wearable metronome, but you're also going to be able to hear it. For this example, we're going to start at the beginning and do the first two full notes, so the grace note to low G and then the grace note change to low A. We're going to start with a nice crispy grace note down to the low G, and we're going to hold that G for two full counts of this metronome, which I have set at 80 right now. Then we're also going to hold the lifting motion of that G grace note to A for two full counts before we finally go down to the A for two full counts. Right now, we're not in a hurry. I want this good, clean, accurate. Let's give it a try. And again. Then to complete this bar of music, this measure of music, we're going to use another G grace note, which you can see is lifted in yellow on the top of the third note. And then we're closing with two fingers down to low G. So I'm going to go through this again. Again, we're going to give two beats to each of the notes and the grace note changes where all the fingers are up so that we can make sure that the fingers are clean and accurate. Before we move on to the next series of notes, I want to go ahead and start trying to make that grace note a little bit more snug. What I'm going to do this time is still two full beats on the actual theme note, the large note, but this time I'm only going to give one beat to the grace note change where the fingers are in the air so we can start trying to make that smaller because eventually that'll be a cha kind of sound, just giving you that emphasis to the note. But again, we're going to make sure everything's clean and we're going to build it slowly, systematically, methodically from nice and open to nice and clean and fast. And you can hear there, now those lifting motions, the grace notes themselves are starting to sound a little bit more like a grace note. For the final step before we move on, I'm going to try to make this a snappier grace note. Ultimately, you want the grace note when we're changing notes to be the same height and speed as the grace notes we were using to separate notes. Separating notes with that G grace note. Now we're changing notes with that grace note. Notice the grace notes are the same length, height, size, and sound. We don't want them overly big and scoopy. I call it the hungry, hungry hippos effect where the, the grace note itself is kind of being used to hide whatever sloppy motions might be happening on your bottom hand fingers. We don't want that. We want to keep that grace note nice and snug. So no metronome. I'm gonna hold that G and I recommend you hold that G as long as you need to and then try to lift both and lower one quickly with a nice ch kind of sound and see if you can keep it accurate. If you find that is too difficult at this stage of the game, that's just fine. We can work through this whole sheet with the more open grace notes. The speed is less important right now than the accuracy, but I do want to discuss the end goal of what we're trying to do, that nice crispy grace note that's going to really emphasize the note you're landing on. For the next grace note, we're going to be doing the same note changes from A to G to A, but this time we're going to be using the D grace note. The lower pitched the grace note, the less emphasis you're giving to the note. If you want the least emphasized note you can get, you wouldn't use a grace note at all. Less emphasis is the D, a little bit more emphasis would be an E, and the most emphasis is going to be the G. So this is going to be a slightly less emphatic note change, but still just as important, the D grace note one of the more critical grace notes of the instrument. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the low G of the previous bar. So this is the last note of bar one, 
and I'm going to, right now, give each two beats, and you can see exactly what fingers you're trying to lift because of the ones in yellow, and the ones in blue are gonna be the ones that lower. When you can do that accurately, go ahead and keep holding the theme notes, the larger notes for two, and only hold the grace notes for one. Let's give it a go. When you can do that reliably, I take the metronome away for a little bit and see if you can make that D grace note in this case nice and clear, crisp, but small. So for E grace notes, again, it's going to be the top ring finger, and you can see that because it's written on the chart. If it's in yellow with an open hole, you know it's gonna be lifting of that particular finger. If you see blue with a closed hole in the next step, you know you're gonna be lowering the fingers that are shown. So I'm gonna do two beats each, starting on the A before the last bar of line one. Now I'm gonna go ahead, go through that, keep the theme notes at two beats, move the lifting grace note to just one beat now. And then if you're ready, go ahead and try that with smaller grace notes that are nice and snug, but make sure your fingers stay accurate. If you find that this step is having your fingers tighten up or it starts sounding messy, go ahead, go back to 212, keep it open, keep it clean. But if you're ready for it, let's go ahead and try to make these grace notes a little bit quicker. And just like that, you're starting to really get control of this stick right here, the most important part of the instrument, the chanter, and how we can go about creating the illusion of dynamics and emphasis for notes. I'm not going to discuss each and every note change. This would be a two and a half hour video if I discussed each change as much as I just did the line above. But I'm going to go ahead and play through this with two beats each, one beat each, and then again with nice, clear, clean, small grace notes. And I'm gonna do that for each of the lines. And if I find anything along the way I need to address, I'll bring it up. For the next line, I'm gonna be playing it basically as written, though I am giving the quarter note right now two beats. So I'm gonna give that half note, the one with the hole in it, four beats this time as I play through this line. And I'm gonna be giving the grace notes each two beats as well. So let's give this a go. <laughs> Now holding the grace notes for just one beat each. And now, finally, playing it basically as written two beats for the quarters, four beats for the halves, and playing the grace notes as quick, chirpy grace notes as they should be at full speed. So I hope some of the patterns are starting to become more clear as we're playing through this. That you can see in the first step, every time we're just lifting, and in the second step, as we're going to the big note as written, that's when we're lowering our fingers to get to our destination. Sometimes we're closing just the grace note finger, other times we're having to lower other fingers that are required to get to the note in which we're going to. But still in the first step, when you see the yellow, it's just the lifting of fingers. And in the second step, as we go to the actual note, is the closing of the fingers. So we're gonna lift, before we lower. And we're gonna work all of these out cleanly and accurately and make sure that they're right. All right, on to line three. <laughs> Thank you. 
So follow the colors carefully. Look for the dots, look for the circles. Feel free, if you're on a tablet, to like make these large. I know it's a relatively small font. I didn't want this to take seven pages to, to print out if you were going to print it. But if it's on a tablet, feel free to zoom in so you can see it clearly. <laughs> with small grace notes, line three. Line four is going to finish up all the combinations with low G. We're gonna have two combinations using the note D, but note, we do not have D grace notes available for us on a D. We cannot change with a D grace note heading up or down from a D because it's a D. So we're only gonna have G and E grace notes. So for E and F, we're only gonna have G grace notes because we're now on or above the E or the D grace notes that we had been using for some of the lower note changes. So as you go up the scale, there are fewer options for the lifting grace notes you can change with. Again, I'm gonna go through the whole line with the same process I had been doing with the others. Now it's just one beat on each of those grace notes. Now I'm gonna go through two beats, two beats and four beats with good, clean, small grace notes. Now line one of page two, we're all finished with low G finally. There's a lot of combinations with low G, but there's going to be a lot of embellishments using low G, so I don't really mind that we spent so much time, and we're trying to be fairly exhaustive about all of the note changes here. So again, I'm gonna play the line, two beats, two beats, four beats, with two beats on the grace note changes. We'll see how it goes. Same idea with one beat on the grace notes. And now with the grace notes being small and concise and the notes being, well, two, two, and four beats each. And we're 
We're going to finish up today with the final line here, which is the last of the notes without crosses. Again, where we're trying to move our hands back and forth. And we're going to finish up today with the last. And this last line here finishes us up for the day with all of the grace note changes we can make without having to involve crossing with other hands. That'll be, again, for the next video in this series. So let's finish this up strong. Now just one beat on the grace note changes. And then finally playing through the line, if you can, with the grace notes being nice and short and concise. I'll say it for the third time because repetition is important for memory retention. If it's messy with the quick grace notes, go and keep it slow and open. Cleanliness is more important than speed at this point. So yeah, it's a lot of work. No one said playing the pipes was easy, but hopefully this has helped simplify the idea of what we're trying to do while we're changing notes with lifting grace notes. I'm gonna slow the metronome down to 72 beats per minute now, and I'm going to play it as written, meaning the quarter notes getting one beat, half notes getting two beats, and the grace notes staying nice and clear and crisp. This is the ultimate goal for what we're trying to do with this exercise. <laughs> Gotta turn pages. And with the metronome, you're trying to land the grace note as best you can exactly on the metronome. Set that the cha of the grace note and the boop of the metronome are kind of one in the same sound. That's harder to do than you might think. And I'm not trying to claim that I just did it absolutely perfectly. Working with the metronome is something that we all can get better at over time. There you go, guys. Here's a systematic way of going through and starting to learn how to change notes with grace notes. One of the fundamental things we have to be able to do if we're going to play our pipe music cleanly, accurately, and with the type of expression and dynamics that we know we can get out of this fantastic instrument. We're going to be following this up with another video where we start dealing with more complicated grace note changes that involve more complicated, well, just note changes. So when you add grace notes to more complicated note changes, well, of course it gets harder. In this basic series, I want to try to make sure that these videos are as bite-sized and manageable as possible, and hopefully clear and concise enough to convey the information needed to, well, hopefully make you a successful beginning piper. Well, there you go, everybody. If you got something out of this video, think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, commenting below with any thoughts you have, and sharing with other pipers that you think might be able to benefit from these kind of exercises. If you want to go the extra mile, I do have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way. And I'm going to have the names scrolling here of my various patrons. Thank you all so very much for your support. And I'd love to add you to this list of fine people. 
If you want more personalized instruction, I do give Skype lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me here below and we'll get you going. I'm working with people from all over the planet. I'd love to work with you soon. All right, everybody. Thanks again for watching. I'm Matt Willis and until next time, cheers. Thank you.